All right, let's see if an 860 player can get over 900. Let's get to it. Spin it. Hey DMD family, welcome back to another Discs MD video. Bunky here, and uh, we're going to start a brand new series. This was inspired by Robbie C and the guys over at Foundation. So I'm going to start doing a series on uh, tournament play and how I play each course in a with a tournament mindset. My goal this year is to be over 900 rated. So each of the rounds in this series, I'm going to have to reach 900 uh, rating on my round, and we're going to play it just like a tournament, one throw, one putt. Uh, just like Robbie C is doing over his, we're going to be ch calling this Chasing 900. I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to do this sort of as like a hybrid between what Robbie C is doing and what the Foundation guys are doing with their Level Up series, where I can't move on to the next course until I hit 900 at the current course. So uh, we're here at Muddy Run. I'm going to be playing Silvers. I'm going to be playing the, the easier courses and working my way up uh, to the harder courses. This isn't the easiest course, but it's one of the easier ones, I guess. Um, so anyway, let's get the whole one and uh, we'll, we'll get to it. All right, so what we're gonna do is track the rating by the round uh, that was played in a tournament, uh, the last tournament that was played here back in September. And I wrote it down because my mind is not as good as it used to be. So, uh, so a 64, uh, this is a par 60 course. So a 64 was an 893 rated round. A 63 was a 903 rated round. So to get over 900, I have to shoot a 63. Uh, if we want to be ambitious, uh, par uh, at this course was a 930 rated round. So my goal today is a 63, which is three over, uh, with a hope that maybe hitting par from the silvers. I don't play silvers here a lot, so we'll see how it goes. So. Uh, 63, a 63 is, uh, is the goal here today. So let's get to it and see if we can do it. Hole number one here is a 232 foot par three, way, way uphill, um, straight ahead. There's an opening to the right. So like a, a forehand would be good here, but my forehand is not great. So I'm going to try to go straight at it, uh, with my lariat again, way uphill. Um, I got here, got all my stuff unpacked and realized I forgot my gl friction glove. So it's chilly, it's windy, it's a little bit rainy, so the course conditions aren't the greatest today, but hey, no excuses if this were a tournament, right? I would still have to perform. So let's go straight at it and see what happens. First throw of the day, no warm-ups. Ah, tag the tree. Okay, we'll have to see if we can get up and down for par there. All right, so we got uh, still about 100 feet left. I'm really I'm right on this cliff here. So what I'm gonna try to do is tell you my mindset, what I'm thinking about when I'm going through my shot selection and looking at my line. Not the greatest, uh, not the greatest of footing here. And my backhand on these shots isn't, isn't the most dependable. So I usually look for like a, a flex forehand upshot, but I don't have it. So I'm gonna have to do sort of a patent pending backhand with a straight putter. So I'll use my Benny. Hopefully we can just get up close. I'm not trying to run this, just trying to get up for the par. Yeah, that should do. Let's go get it. All right, a par to start off, we'll take it again. Three over is the number here to get 900. I don't know, maybe I'm selling myself short. We'll see. On hole two. All right, 542 foot par four. Uh, that grouping of trees straight out there, the basket's right in the middle of them. Pretty stiff headwind. Wind is a problem on this hole, typically. A lot of wind coming up off the water. So and it's usually a headwind. So I'm gonna throw my Warbird here just because it's a pretty stiff, stiff headwind and I think my bayonet's gonna flip over too much. So I just want to keep something out in the middle. Middle left is where I want to be, really. <sighs> Not there. 
That was way high. All right, stuck in the ground. Whew, not great, but we'll deal with it. All right, again, I lost my range finder a while back. <laughs> this stuck in the ground pretty good. Um, I lost my range finder a little while back, so I've been here before, so we're probably like a good, I don't know, 280 out or so. I'm gonna throw my uh, Brazos here. It's really low. Uh, I don't know, maybe I should just go straight for it. Now, I'm gonna throw my Brazos, keep it low, try to skip something up, uh, get around the left side and skip it right. Let's see if we can do it. Get down. Ah. All right, well, those trees hung me up. I gotta keep it low. That wind popped me up in the air. Gotta keep that nose down, people. Keep the nose down. Uh, just a little too high. Let's go. All right, we have about a 50 footer here. Uh, but this has real roll away potential. So in a tournament, like uh, in, in a standard like practice or a fun round, a recreational round, I'm running this. But in a tournament, I may give it a soft bid. But again, there's real roll away potential. So my best bet is probably just to get it up there, get the par and walk on to hole three. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. So we'll give ourselves the par there. I have a tap in. Move on to hole three. Just so I can tell you, show you guys that I'm actually tapping in. There it is. On to hole three. All right, hole number three. Again, we're playing silvers. You're used to me playing golds here. I, I almost never, I don't think I've ever videoed myself playing silvers here. So it is 443 foot par four. Nice hyzer gap up the middle. It's really uphill. Uh, what is it? 66 feet uphill. That's really uphill. Okay, so I'm going to play my bayonet. Hopefully get it flip up the flat and then hyzer out at the end. Uh, this is a good chance of birdie if I play it right. Ah. ah. Had to beat that tree. Oh well, now we're scrambling for par. All right, well, didn't give myself great position. No chance for a run up because there's log. Basket's way up there. I'm gonna forehand something. Got a standstill. Not gonna get much on it. Again, we just need to get up and down for par here. Yeah, that'll do. That left side's probably where I want to be. Let's go see what I got. All right, so we still got probably about 180, 200 feet in. You can see the wind. I don't know if you can see the flag on top. The wind is just whipping. I do have a narrow forehand gap, but I don't know if I can hit. I don't know if I can hit that. This is all about high percentage. So I'm going to try my BB-8. Oh, BB-8. <laughs> Welcome to Star Wars. Sorry, am I in frame? Probably not even in frame. Sorry. I might camera flipped around because my better camera is on the back. The downside is I can't see if I'm in frame or not. So sorry. I'm going to try my BB-6, trying to turn over, use the wind to get me back left. I think it's just the best percentage chance, uh, the highest percentage shot. <sighs> Yep, there it is. Stop. Good. I'll have like a 20, 25 footer from there for the par. Hopefully you can we can make that putt. Am I too close to you? Up close and personal. All right, about a 20 footer here. Way uphill. Not the greatest of footing, but I should be able to make this if I have my mind right. The temperature is dropping as I'm filming. I can feel that this wind bringing in a cold front. Oh. All right, well, that's a bogey. We'll move on to four. I, I, and that was a chain out, but like Robbie C says, you know, that just was not a good putt, didn't commit to it, really need to commit to those 20 footers, so let's go. All right, 243 foot par three straight ahead. You see it right there between these goal posts. Again, the wind is getting stronger as we're playing. 
and it's getting colder. My hand is getting red. No excuses though. All right, straight up the middle with the VB6. Uh, none of these are gimme birdies. That's that's the thing that I love and hate about this course. So now uh, we got to get that stroke back though. We got a bogey, so we got to get it back. So here we go. Let's try it. Nope, turned it over. Okay, well, we'll have a shot to get up and down for par over there. All right, set you up behind the basket. You can see where it is setting up over here. Let me get to it. Ah, uh, yeah, so I don't have a backhand play here, which is what I was afraid of. So I'm just going to step out here, do a little hyzer flick up. Hopefully this gets there. Oh, are you kidding me right now? All right, you got to commit to shots. You got to commit to shots. I see that I didn't commit to that shot, and it's going to cost me. So now we got a long putt for bogey. I mean, for par. Let's see if we can get it. Nope, short. Okay. Wow, two over already. That's not a good sign for this. But we got a lot of ground. And we learned some things, so we'll make it up and get better from hole five on. All right, so this is a 316 foot par three. Goes around, uh, bends to the left here off of this tee. Um, got a forehand hyzer gap or a backhand turnover. I'm gonna do the backhand turnover with the Mockingbird. So what I'm, the two things that I learned, you gotta commit to the shot. Don't just, don't baby it. Don't second guess yourself. Pick your shot and throw. And then you have to play the win. Like here, it's a really stiff right to left win. I'm really, maybe I shouldn't play the turnover. Uh, maybe I should play just a straight shot and let the wind, wind uh, take it. So maybe I'll just do a hyzer flip and see what happens. Yep. Okay. Good skip. Decent roll. Didn't hyzer it. I, I hyzer flipped it, but it didn't get up as far as I wanted it to. Uh, but that was certainly the play there. Again, I don't think I committed to that drive near as much as I should have. Uh, clear this stuff out of my stance. Maybe. Wow. Here comes the wind. Hopefully the mic is draining out the wind some. Uh, wow. This is a good, what, 80... 80 footer or so skip up there take the par and move on two over through five i don't know we'll see all right nice little uh 287 foot par three way downhill uh not a lot of wind here i think the the the, the hill here is blocking the wind from us um i'm gonna throw my bb6 it's sort of a straight shot but i'm gonna put it out right and let it fade left a little bit. Hopefully I get it there. We'll see. Fade. Fade. Whew. Well, that was a distance, but I did not trust that. I don't know. How. This is my tournament mindset. I don't trust my throws. And then they don't do what I want. I really just need to trust, trust your shots. So let's go get it. All right, weird footing right next to this tree. Gonna have to straddle. Okay, so here's a question and put it in the chat. I'm not gonna move it, but there's a stick that is in my stance, but it, it extends in front of my lie. Most of it's in back of my lie, but it extends to the front of my, can I move this stick? I'm not going to, cause I don't know the ruling. I need to look that up though. Put in the comments below if you know that rule. Okay, so we have uh, about a 40 footer here. Straddle. Ah, all right. This is why we practice straddle putting, stagger putting, on a knee putting, scuba. That's why we practice. I gotta get better at those. This is not starting off extremely well. <laughs> But we'll get there. Again, conditions, I, you can't make excuses, but the conditions are 
less than stellar right now. But again, in a tournament, this is how you have to approach it and you have to adjust, make adjustments, adapt to your conditions. So I, I'm kind of liking this. So I'm, I'm hoping uh, this, this uh, prepares me for the upcoming tournament season. We'll see. All right, 337 foot par three. A uh, little to the left of the tee pad here. <sighs> Again, turnover backhand. I have this big split tree right in the way. I think that's a low percentage shot. I'm not great with a forehand off the tee, but if I can do like a flex forehand shot, turnover forehand shot, have it come back to the basket, I think that's my play. So I'm going to try it with the bayonet. Let's give it a shot. <sighs> Oh, I hit a branch. Oh, that was it. That was a shot. I hit a little branch that flew me up in the air. All right, let's go. All right, nice little hyzer approach. About 130 out or so. Oh, wow. Skip down, please. Okay, that should be like a 20-footer. Let's go get it. All right, a little longer than a 20-footer. Oh, no, no. About an 18-footer. So, uh, again, I'm playing this like a tournament, so why did I yank that so far left is why, what I was talking, asking myself I was, as I was walking to this shot. It's because I power-gripped and didn't fan-grip like I do with 130-foot shots. I, I, again, these are the things that... You just, stupid mistakes like that lead to strokes on the course. Now I left myself with a 18 footer, which should be guaranteed for me. But after that throw, you know, making an errant throw on the approach, you start questioning yourself and then 18 footers become 25 footers in your mind. So again, just have to be methodical in the way I think and the way I approach every shot. Not be anal about it, but be methodical about it. Let's go. All right, 567 foot par four down to the left through all those trees. So I'm gonna hang it to the right. It's my growler. I'm gonna hang it to the right and let it ride back left to a turnover shot with it. I think that's my best option here. So I'm gonna throw it. You can see a sign down there for a tee pad for nine. I'm gonna throw it kind of there, hopefully. Let it ride down. Just like that. Wish I would have gotten more air on that, but it is what it is. There we go. Before that shot, everything that I've been throwing, if you go back and watch, is high. So I cor tried to correct for that shot, and I think I overcorrected. But uh, at least the correction was made. So we'll we'll go from there. All right, not the greatest of drives. Ugh. I have a lane right down here through the middle. I think that's the, my best shot. Like, I could try to flex forehand something here or turn something over wide and let it. But I think the BB6 straight up the gut, let it fade a little to the left is the play here. Except you do that. Again, I am not trusting my throw right now. I'm questioning myself. And, and hesitation and unsurety are my biggest downfall, especially in a tournament, I'm seeing it right now. So I have got to change that. I mean, this, this should be a give me birdie, a give me birdie hole. And I'm, I, I have a potential of bogeying it here. So let's get this forehand up, up shot and get the par. Counter skip. Okay. That should be the par. Let's go up there and put it in. I mean, but I mean, even if with that shot, I mean, if you've been watching me at all, eh, following my channel at all, even that shot was like 75% commitment. That wasn't a full out commitment. And again, I left myself, you know, a little over a 15 footer, which again, should be automatic. But after an approach that you were tentative on, it translated into tentative putting. So maybe this is why I'm not 900 rated. Okay, snuck that in over the edge. Let's go on to the last hole of the front, hole number nine. 
All right, 251 foot par three, straight ahead. Got to hook it around some trees. Nice backhand hyzer shot for me. Righties have a backhand hyzer as well, but a left-handed hyzer with the Brazos here. Let's see if we can end with a birdie. All right, that's probably a 35 foot putt for birdie. Let's go see if we can make it. All right, this is one of those ones. One, two, three, 20 footer that you're like, I should make this. But it's for birdie. So don't get in your head. So we'll talk about this after I'm finished this putt. Get out of your head, just make the putt. All right, there we go, snuck it in. Let me go get it, I'll be right back. All right, there you have it. Well, we finished the front nine at one over with that birdie. So takeaways from the front nine here are what you say in your mind is important. And I'm finding the lesson learned in this front nine was my telling my, me telling myself on the tee, don't do this. That's not the right approach. And I've heard Robbie C say this before. Uh, and I'm learning it today. Tell yourself what to do, not what not to do. So, lessons learned from the front nine. We're going to try to take them to the back nine, clean it up a little bit. Let's see if we can hit par. I mean, par is a 930 rated round. Right now, our goal is plus three. So, let's keep the eye on that prize. That's a nine, 903 rated round. So, let's see if we can do it. Thanks for joining me. Come back. Uh, hopefully, this drops in a couple of days. I'm going to try to not to take a week between the front nine and the back nine, just a day or so between front nine and back nine uh, when I release full rounds. I don't like to do them all at once because they get long. I like you to be able to watch the front nine, be done, and then the next day or two I'll drop the back nine and, and you can watch that. So until next time, enjoy the journey. Here's your verse of the day.